This is the Shure SM7B. It's the third generation of probably the most famous microphone, and it started 50 years ago. A lot of people see it as just the podcasting microphone, but I don't know if you knew this. Michael Jackson recorded most of Thriller on this microphone. Red Hot Chili Peppers was notorious for recording their albums on it, and it's still a staple vocal mic in recording studios today. And this is the Shure SM7DB, Shure's brand new version of the microphone. It's not the Shure SM7C. In fact, except for a couple small changes and one major change, it's the exact same microphone. And I can prove that. We've been switching back and forth between the two microphones this entire intro. That little dot in the bottom left corner, when it was blue, we were listening to the SM7B. When it was green, we were listening to the SM7DB. Could you hear the difference? So if it's not a new iteration of the mic, and if they sound exactly the same, why did Shure end up releasing it at all? Well, it turns out there's actually been a problem with the SM7B, and it's been growing. But even though this mic has been around for 50 years, that problem has only been a problem recently. So instead of releasing a whole new SM7C, they released a new version of the SM7B, the SM7DB, for a very specific group of people. And I think it was kind of genius. Hey, by the way, any broadcasters in here, I've got a sponsor and a discount for you that I think you're gonna like. If you're looking to spice up your broadcaster live streams at all, one of the best ways to do that is to add some overlays, some graphics, some nice visual spice to your content. And owned.tv is your one-stop shop for all your stream overlay aesthetic needs. I was just browsing their graphics today and looking through the Minimalistic series. Minimalism is always gonna be one of my favorites, but that whole section is phenomenal. The dark series, the minimal series, the pure series. If you're looking to add some graphics to your stream without it overshadowing you, that's a great place to look. And every one of these comes with overlays, transitions, alerts, anything thing that you need to get your stream up and running. So check out the link in the description below. It'll give you 50% off if you click on it or just use code senpai at checkout. And when you do that, by the way, it helps out the channel. So thank you for doing that. But yeah, go grab yourself some designs at own.tv today. Let's keep talking about this microphone. So whenever I make videos for new content creators, whether that's new streamers or YouTubers or podcasters, this is rarely my main recommendation. I mean, if you're just trying to go live on Twitch on a shoestring budget, you can get 80% of the quality for $100 with something like the Rode PodMic or even Sure has a budget version of this, the MV7X for $180. It's pretty clear that this mic is not aimed at that audience, but a comment I'll always refute is that this microphone, the Shure SM7B, is overpriced. There's a reason that in every single recording studio, even our own, there's a $5,000 condenser mic and then next to it is a $400 SM7B. Like this is probably the cheapest mic you'll find that still gives you professional quality. Like this is a premium mic, just only priced at a moderately premium price. So this, along with that real dark, smooth tone, like that real famous broadcast sound, plus its top-notch ability to reject any sound that's not right in front of it, make it quintessential for radio and podcasting. So price has never been as big of an issue on this microphone as the internet might make you think. It's only as of recently with social media and content creation that the word broadcast has become a much more diverse word. I mean, it's not just a select few radio hosts and professional studios anymore. Now half the world is broadcasting themselves from their own bedroom. And so as audio equipment has had to change to suit a lower budget, it's also become less powerful. And this is where the SM7B started running into problems. Dynamic mics already require more gain than condenser mics, and the SM7B is famous for this. In fact, if you ever watch a YouTube review of any audio interface, one of the classic metrics they'll always say is, can this power an SM7B? And if it can't, you need to go out and buy an additional preamp, something like a cloud lifter for $100 or a FET head for, I got mine for 50 bucks. These sit between your interface and your microphone and it's powered by the phantom power of your interface and it provides typically an extra 25 dB of gain. And for a long time, they've been the best solution for the SM7B's problem, until now. The SM7DB has a built-in preamp that works the same way. You send it phantom power, and with the switch on the back, you can turn on either 18 dB or 28 dB of gain. Problem solved with a $100 price increase, which has now raised a brand new debate. Do you get the $500 SM7DB with the built-in preamp, or do you get the original $400 SM7B and just buy a $50 preamp and save 50 bucks? And by the way, just to prove that there's no quality difference between those two options, during the intro of this video, the SM7DB was going through the FET head to add 25 dB of gain. That upward preamp option really is a great solution if you must have a premium microphone, but you're also trying to save every dollar you can. But 
Is that where the most overlap is? Or more likely, most of the people in the SM7B market are asking questions like, do I really wanna buy a $400 microphone that requires a piece of third-party gear just to get it to work properly? Or what if we're moving the studio or shifting gear around and we lose one of them and we can't use a microphone until we get a new one? To a lot of these mid to high-end studios that can afford SM7Bs, the peace of mind of everything being first party or the preamp being built into the microphone is absolutely worth it. And I agree, I think that's a fair priority, but I think there's a bigger reason for the release of this microphone than all that. The Shure SM7B has single-handedly created the outboard preamp industry, and Shure has gotten zero dollars for creating that market. By putting a preamp inside the microphone itself, not only do they get to simplify the SM7B experience for all those broadcasters, but now they get to take a little piece of that preamp pie. And just to be clear, I don't think there's anything nefarious about that. I mean, the preamp built into here is right in the middle of the price points of the two most popular outboard preamps. It's, it is fairly priced, but it's just kind of similar to if Apple removed the headphone jack from their phones 50 years ago, but didn't make wireless headphones until now. And now they do. Links to everything down below. If you're still watching this video, you obviously enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the like button because it's free. And if you don't have anything to say in the comments, just leave your favorite emoji for engagement. And as always, happy streaming.